Hello everybody and welcome back to the Digital SAT Reading Writing Course. Today we're going to be doing lesson 9 out of 15 on text detail. So first off, what do you need to know? A text detail question is going to require that you have an understanding of the text and the ideas that it's trying to get across. And the question will ask you to interpret a certain section of the text and that makes it obviously very necessary for you to understand the purpose of each sentence of the text as well as the overall idea. So let's try to get some practice in. The following text is adapted from Lewis Carroll's 1889 satirical novel, Sylvia and Bruno. A crowd has gathered outside a room belonging to the warden, an official who reports to the Lord Chancellor. One man, who was more excited than the rest, flung his hat high into the air and shouted, as well as I could make out, who roared for the sub-warden? Everybody roared, but whether it was for the sub-warden or not, did not clearly appear. Some were shouted bread and some taxes, but no one seemed to know what it was they really wanted. All this I saw from the open window of the warden's breakfast saloon, looking across the shoulder of the Lord Chancellor. What can it all mean? He kept repeating to himself. I never heard such shouting before, and at this time of the morning too, and with such unanimity. Based on the text, how does Lord Chancellor respond to the crowd? So, this question is trying to ask us specifically about Lord Chancellor and how he responds, and that is completely right here. Okay, so he's obviously repeating to himself, I never heard such shouting before and with such unanimity. Okay, so let's look at where we see this in one of the answer choices. A, he asks about the meaning of the crowd's shouting even though he claims to know what the crowd wants. So, he doesn't claim to know what the crowd wants. Never says that here, so let's look at B. He indicates a desire to speak to the crowd even though the crowd is asked to speak to the subwarden. Well, does he indicate an actual desire to speak to the crowd? He seems pretty nervous. But no real indication that he wants to speak to the crowd. That would be an assumption that we would have to make ourselves. But it never actually says here. C. He expresses sympathy for the crowd's demands, even though the crowd's shouting annoys him. So the annoying part, we still don't know. Once again, that would also have to be an assumption. So now let's look at D. He describes the crowd as being united, even though the crowd clearly appears otherwise. He definitely does describe the crowd as being united. Okay. And then right up here, we can see that, you know, they didn't really seem to know what they were shouting about. Bread and some taxes, no one really knew. But he does describe the crowd as being united, and that would make D the correct answer here. For many years, the only existing fossil evidence of Myxopterid eurypterids, an extinct family of large aquatic arthropods known as sea scorpions and related to modern arachnids and horseshoe crabs, came from four species living on the paleo continent of Lower Russia. In a discovery that expands our understanding of the geographical distribution of myxopterids, paleontologist Bo Wang and others have identified fossilized remains of a new myxopterid species, Teropterus zushinesis, that lived over 400 million years ago on the paleo continent of Gondwana. According to the text, why was Wang and his team's discovery of the Teropterus fossil significant? They're talking about the significance of the fossil, right? So, of course, We'd have to do a little bit of searching here because there isn't really a section that explicitly states this. But looking here at the introduction, we can see that the only existing fossil evidence of the Eurypterids was found on La Russia. And in a discovery that expands the understanding, so this is an indication that something important happened because it expanded the understanding, they found a mixed species that lived on a different paleo continent. Let's see if that is shown anywhere on these choices. A. The fossil constitutes the first evidence found by scientists that myxopterids lived more than 400 million years ago. Well, this evidence here doesn't have anything to do with more than 400 years ago. The significance is that you have some here, and they also found some here. Okay. So, the fossil helped establish that myxopterids are more closely related to modern arachnids and horseshoe crabs than previously thought. Well, of course, the relationship is never stated here. It is, the relationship is stated, but the new discovery doesn't show how this relationship could be novel in any way. C. The fossil helped establish a more accurate timeline of the evolution of myxopterids on the paleo continents of Laurasia and Gondwana. So the only timestamp that we're given is 400 million years ago, right here. So we couldn't really create a timeline with that. And D, the fossil constitutes the first evidence found by scientists that myxopterids existed outside the paleo continent of Low Russia. See, and this one right here does definitely show how previously this was what was known, but then after the discovery, they found that there was also some others on a different paleo continent. And that would, of course, make D the correct answer here. This is our last example for today. 
The following text is adapted from Edith Nesbitt's 1906 novel, The Railway Children. Mother did not spend all her time in paying dull visits to dull ladies and sitting dully at home waiting for dull ladies to pay visits to her. She was almost always there, ready to play with the children and read to them and help them to do their home lessons. Besides this, she used to write stories for them while they were at school and read them aloud after tea, and she always made up funny pieces of poetry for their birthdays and for other great occasions. According to the text, what is true about mother? Well, this whole thing is basically about what mother does, so let's just look at these options. She wishes that more ladies would visit her. Well, this is definitely the opposite of what it was saying here. It said she did not spend her time paying dull visits and waiting for ladies to visit her. B. Birthdays are her favorite special occasion. Her favorite? Maybe she enjoys them because it does say down here that she loves po uh, birthdays. But her favorite never says that. C. She creates stories and poems for her children. This she does. Right here. She used to write stories for them while they're at school and read them aloud after tea. So this one definitely would be correct. D. Reading to her children is her favorite activity. Well, this is wrong for the same reason as B. She definitely enjoys it, but is it her favorite? We don't know. Never stated. But C is definitely the correct option here. Final tips to wrap this up. First of all, make sure you understand the prompt and make sure you understand the flow of the ideas. And then, of course, check the question, see what it's asking you. And three, analyze, choose based on the question. Make sure that what you're choosing is definitely in the text, okay? It's very straightforward. There shouldn't be really any ambiguity at all. If you analyze the text properly, you should be able to figure out what the correct answer is with relative ease. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you good luck on your SATs in the future, and please subscribe. It helps me make more of these free videos for you all. Thank you, and have a good rest of your day.